Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Tantiova, Benthic Druid as her commander, a 5-mana 3-3 legendary Merfolk Druid, saying whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life and draw a card. So a very powerful card or engine if it can stay on the battlefield. And to synergize with Tatiova, we've got an entire category here dedicated to putting additional lands in play or letting us play additional lands each turn. That way we can also potentially play Tatiova and play one or two additional lands in the same turn so we can immediately draw some extra cards. And even if the opponent has an immediate answer to Tatiova, we at least get a little bit of advantage and will also make it easier to replay our commander once we have to pay the commander tax. So starting out at 2 mana, there's a Druid class, which will gain life when a land enters the battlefield under our control, can level it up to let us play an additional land each turn, and then at level 3 turns one of our lands into a creature with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, which will also be a recurring theme in this deck. We've got Azusa's Many Journeys from Kamigawa, letting us play an additional land this turn on the first chapter. Explorer lets us draw a card and play an additional land, and very similar is Growth Spiral at Instant Speed. We've got both Elanor Scout and Scaled Herbalist, letting us put an additional land in play if we activate them. Azusa Lost But Seeking lets us play two additional lands on each of our turns. Dread of Legion Grove lets us play one additional land, also fixes our mana. We've got Wayward Swordtooth, also lets us play an additional land, and is a 5-5 with Ascend, but can only attack and block if we reach the City's Blessing, meaning controlling 10 or more permanents at some point. We've got Uro, banned in many formats, still legal in Historic Brawl, lets us put an additional land in play, draw a card and gain 3 life when we play it for 3 mana, and can later be escaped for 4 mana out of the graveyard, and will be a 6-6 Elder Giant with the same ability when it attacks, so incredibly powerful. And then Oracle of Moldaya, one of the better creatures to play extra lands with, lets us play lands off the top of our deck as we get to look at the top card of our library and play up to one additional land each turn. Then we've got a Ren and Seven, which can make a Tree Folk token with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, as well as a Reach with the minus three ability, can reveal the top four cards to find lands and put them into our hand with the plus one. And sometimes we'll even end up using the zero ability to put any number of land cards from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, which can potentially draw a ton of cards at once with Tantiova. And then a Cultivator Colossus, a relatively recent addition to the archetype, a 7 mana Plant Beast with Trample, power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, and when Colossus enters the battlefield we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, and if we do we get to draw a card and to repeat this process. And in a deck with almost 60 lands, we're very likely to chain together a few lands even in the late game, and then we can potentially draw a ton of cards with Tatiova. Keep in mind we don't get to draw cards from Tatiova while the Colossus is comboing off, otherwise we could potentially draw our entire deck, but still very powerful. Then the next category of cards are traditional ramp cards, which will find lands in our library and put them on the battlefield. So we've got Into the North at 2 mana, can find snow lands including Faceless Haven, Cultivate finds two basic lands, putting one of them into play tapped. Then we've got Harrow, Roiling Regrowth and Spring Bloom Druid, which are all very similar, sacrificing a land to find two basics to put on the battlefield tapped, so it can provide two triggers for Tantiova. Then at 4 mana we have both Migration Path and a Vastwood Surge, finding two basics to put on the battlefield tapped. Migration Path we can cycle, Vastwood Surge we can kick to put plus one counters on the entire team. Quandrex Cultivator finds either a forest or island to put on the battlefield untapped, stapled onto a 3-4 creature. And Verdant Mastery we can either play for 4 mana or 6 mana to find a whole bunch of basic lands, putting some of them into play tapped. And then Beanstalk Giant can use the Fertile Footsteps Adventure for 3 mana to find a basic and put it into play. And then later we can play the 7 mana creature with once again power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control. Then the next category are landfall cards, starting out with Lotus Cobra, which can make a man of any color whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, so we can potentially trigger that multiple times in the same turn, giving us a big mana advantage. Scoot Swarm can make a copy of itself when we have six or more lands in play, so that can quickly reach the token limit in the game. We've got Tireless Provisioners, kind of an upgraded Lotus Cobra, making either a food token or a treasure token with landfall. Zendikar's Royal makes a 2-2 elemental token, and then we've got Ancient Green Warden, doesn't have landfall itself, but lets us replay lands out of our graveyard, and essentially doubles our landfall triggers, including the ones from Tatiova. And then we've got more ways to replay lands out of the graveyard with Ramanup Excavator, great with any fetch lands and other lands we can sacrifice, and Crucible Worlds as a 3-mana artifact with the same ability. 
Then we also have Augur of Autumn, which lets us play lands off the top of our library. And if we enable Coven, we can also play creatures off the top of our deck. And then we've got a few ways to recur cards from our graveyard with a Timeless Witness, which can also be eternalized for 7 mana, turning into a 4-4 zombie with the same Enters the Battlefield ability. And Balagat Recovery can also be played as a land. And then the final category here are kind of the miscellaneous. We've got Broken Bond, destroying an artifact or enchantment, and letting us put an extra land into play. We've got Kendra's Transformation as a nice answer to an opposing commander, turning it into a 3-3 Elk, losing all its abilities and drawing a card in the process. Time Warp to take an extra turn. We've got Nissa doubling the mana or force produce, letting us turn lands into 3-3 Elementals with Vigilance and Haste. We've got Rivers Rebuke to bounce all the opponent's non-land permanents back to their hand. Multani with power toughness equal to the number of lands we control, reach and trample. And for two mana we can also pick it back up from our graveyard, as well as return some lands back to our hand in the process, which can actually be an advantage if we need to enable landfall and are out of lands in hand. We've got Kogla, fighting an opposing creature when it enters, can destroy artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. And then finally, Mass Manipulation can steal multiple creatures and planeswalkers from the opponent once we have a lot of mana in the late game. And then our mana base, as we mentioned, almost 60 lands, as we want to make sure we always have lands in hand to put in play with our various effects. A lot of utility lands, as you can imagine, creature lands like Hall of the Storm Giants, we've got our Lair of the Hydra, as well as some colorless creature lands like Faceless Haven, and the Crawling Barons, which we can sink a lot of extra mana into. Fetch lands are also very important to let us replay lands out of the graveyard, so we can keep fetching more and more basic lands. So we've got Evolving Wilds, Fabled Passage, and Terramorphic Expanse, and then a few more ways to spend mana in the late game. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see what the deck does. All right, we're on the play, facing Zakama, Primal Calamity. So it's the Battle of the Ramp decks, and our hand's okay. Two early ramp cards with Into the North and Explore. And then hopefully we'll pick up a few bigger ramp cards. Maybe ways to play extra lanes, so Tatiova gets to combo off. We already have Faceless Haven in hand, so I'll grab an island. And then we can explore. And a Reverse Rebuke could come in handy as well. So next turn, play Tantiova. And draw a card right away. Falcon Exploration can provide some extra card advantage. A Renant 7 could be very nice too. Poseidon also an answer to Exploration, although I doubt I want to give the opponent an extra land this early in the game. Can activate it for 1 mana, since we control a legendary creature. So I could get rid of the Exploration if I really want. Right, finds an Into the North. Which will trigger exploration once again. Finds a Nissa, which they wouldn't be able to play here. But they do have a lightning bolt, sadly. Alright. Satyova down. Can replay her, but I will waste my landfall trigger in the process. So I think we're better off going with a slightly different approach, either Dried or Renan 7. Getting a Planeswalker down seems fine. And then... Can make a large Tree Folk token. Does this deal damage to Planeswalkers? Only opponents. Um, could also plus to dig for more lands. Next turn I can go Tatiova plus Evolving Wilds at the very least. I guess we can plus Ren next turn. And then... Um, find more lands. Could also potentially use a zero ability with Tatiova in play. As your opponent plays a Fires of Invention, good combo with Zakama. As they can play it and then still have 
Alter lands untapped to use the ability. Mirari's Wake to double their mana. Now that I probably have to Boseju as much as I want to keep Boseju in hand. Don't want to face Zakaima next turn. Okay, so time for Tatiova. Evolving Wiles, draw a card. And draw another card. Right, with only one land in hand, I'm not going to use a zero. We'll just use a plus. Find a couple more lands. And we can attack for eight. And then between Dryad and Swordtooth, we've got a lot of ways to combo with Tatiova. Just gotta hope she survives. River's Rebuke could also bounce all the opponent's enchantments back. Ooh, Oracle of Moldaya. Luckily, no land on top. So your opponent could sack Mindstone, but then because of fires, they won't be able to necessarily cast Daphne Clarion. Opponent goes for Showdown of the Skulls instead, which does reveal a Lightning Helix, but because of their fires, they can't cast any more spells. Okay, so time to combo off here. So let's start by playing, I guess, Swordtooth is fine. Opponent does get to activate Castle Ardenvale at the very least, which is probably trumping my Tree Folk token. So I can use the zero ability on Ren and Seven, put all these lands in play, which will draw a ton of cards, and then I can still cast a River's Rebuke that will unlock the opponent's Lightning Helix to be cast at instant speed. So, definitely want to use the zero ability first. The land lends us its power. All right, so yeah, I think it's time to bounce. Do I want to attack first? They just make a 1-1 one, one token with Castle to jump with. I guess there's a small chance they will be unable to cast a Lightning Helix then. So I guess I can attack first. But yeah, they still have the white mana untapped. I think it's still worth it here. And now we've got a substantial mana advantage. Opponent did not cast a Lightning Helix end of turn, so maybe they missed out on that interaction. But yeah, they should have been able to cast it. And then our opponent explodes. Yeah, too far behind on board now. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Nicol Bolas, a god pharaoh, Grixis control. Well, our hand's okay. Can expect our creatures to be killed or countered, but at least we'll be off to a nice start with uh, an herbalist putting lands in play to go with provisioner, making extra treasures. We'll make it easier to replay our commander once it gets answered. And then Lair of the Hydra, also a nice threat. Narsets prevents card draw, so something we'll have to take out before getting Tatiova online. I think we still go for Provisioner, activate Herbalists, then I might as well put a Lotus Field in play. Make a treasure. And now a Timeless Witness can also potentially get a land back from our graveyard. Keep an open mind. Narset finds Skyclave Relic. 
and a call against command takes out my treasure and my creature. Okay, so we can take out Narset with the Herbalist if we want. I think that's okay, and then play Cultivator. And then next turn, can try and play Tatiova and get some extra lands out of the deal. Celestis. Are they gonna keep a power word kill? Looks like it. Now we can play Tatiova, hoping it doesn't get countered, and then play a land. If they respond by killing Tatiova, we can still activate Herbalist. So I'll still get to draw two cards here. So I don't want to activate Herbalist until they cast a removal spell. And then I could play Excavator, although I've already played Land for the turn. Might be overextending into a Sweeper a little bit. So, how do we feel about that one? Yeah, not great. Although, I guess on the other hand, how many lands do we have right now? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I guess I don't have a land to play after I replay Tatiova next turn. So, Excavator would help with that. So, cross our fingers that there's no board wipe killing everything. Cultivator Colossus. Could be good, but right now we're out of lands in hand. It's gonna be a Skyclave Relic. So next turn we'll see Nicol Bolas show up. In the meantime, play Tatiova. And then Herbalist can put Bosejo in play. Opponent's got another spot removal spell, Doomblade this time. We'll do the same trick as last time. And then I could send Tatiova to the graveyard, where we can Timeless Witness her back. Probably not worth it, still fine to play her for the increased cost. And then can attack for 5. And now we've got two creature lands between Haven and Hydra, which will certainly come in handy when facing Planeswalkers and Sweepers. And Cultivator Colossus also looking a lot better now. So is it time for Bolas? Signet first. And then Bolas. So can plus, or can take out one of my creatures. Can also go after my hand. Finds an explorer, not that useful. Do have a lot of ramp cards they can hit as opposed to payoff cards. Okay, so we'll untap. And now we've got options. I can just cast a Cultivator Colossus. Might want to leave myself with enough mana to kill Nicol Bolas with my creature land. So if I replay Tatiova, that's probably not going to happen. Let's see, if I deal 5 to Nicol Bolas, falls to 5 loyalty, they can still minus 4. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough. We were definitely ahead in this game based on our big mana advantage, and just the creature lands in general are hard to deal with for the control deck. But uh, it was just about how to 
sequence this particular turn, we could just kill Nicol Bolas, which would require a Hydra for, let's say, x equals 4. So then I still have 4 5 mana plus an Herbalist activation. So I guess enough for like a Timeless Witness, get back Provisioner, maybe play Provisioner, play Fetch Land, plus a land out of the graveyard, and then I can still activate Lair, and then we'll have a Provisioner in play, and then next turn I can maybe combo off with Tatiova. Either way, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Harada, red-green, and yeah, we've got a keepable hand. Multiple early ramp creatures. Let's see here, can play Hall. Maybe playing Castle tapped on one was still better, although then Hall comes into play tapped later, so never mind. Since we do need Green Man on turn two. And then Lenor Scout over Cobra. As next turn I can play Cobra and make a bunch of mana with it right away. In the meantime, opponent's drawing with a Tome of Legends. So I can play Cobra. Play a land. Put an extra land in play. And I'll keep the Evolving Wilds for later. And I guess Castle for now is fine. And then I can maybe scry with the crossroads. And Augur of Autumn. Yeah, that seems fine. Play lands off the top of my deck. No use for the extra mana here. And then next turn, Tatiova into Evolving Wilds is a nice start. Opponent also a bit of a ramp deck to synergize with Randa's 6 mana activated ability. Evolving Wilds can also tap for mana thanks to Dryad of Legion Grove. So, yeah, I can activate Evolving Wilds, see what we draw. Alright, land is good. So now I can play a Tireless Provisioner. Before activating Scout, or we can go for Augur of Autumn. Let's go with a Provisioner. Alright, and Harrow I can also cast here. And get a couple more cards from Tatiova, as well as more treasures. Lands come into play untapped, so I can even play Augur of Autumn if I really wanted to. So we're fully comboing off here, and not that many turns have passed. So maybe get a Zendikar's Royal down, or a Quandrix Cultivator keep going. Alright, now we'll play these and the cars royal. And yeah, her opponent has seen enough, rightfully so. Next turn, get to untap. Can maybe start playing Lands of the Top with Augur of Autumn. Make a lot of 2 2 elementals in the process. Still have Cryptic Caves to draw and Castle Ventress to scry, so we're in good shape. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Nicol Bolas, the Ravager this time. And we've got a keepable hand. Turn 2 Spiral, turn 3 probably Fertile Footsteps. Multania, good curve topper. Don't mind discarding it early and then later getting it back. Second Grow Spiral at instant speed. Although, if they don't have blue mana, might as well do it right away. Okay, so still probably Fertile Footsteps here. 
Could also go for Swordtooth. And then next turn, I can maybe go off with Tatiova a bit better. Field of Ruin can eventually deal with their creature land. For now, it's going to be a Gonti. Might end up a little disappointed since we have a lot of lands in the deck and ramp cards that aren't all that exciting to find with Gonti. Opponent didn't make an instant decision, so either they found two good cards or multiple mediocre cards. Alright, time for Tatiova. Probably should have uh, left myself with a forest in hand, so I could have potentially cast this Broken Bond to destroy Replicating Ring. Currently, they're only blue source, but I think we'll be okay. All right, Augur of Autumn is what they found. Pretty good. Let's them play Highland Lake off the top and Goro Goro. Okay. So we have options, including playing a Scute Swarm here before continuing to combo off. Hope to draw plenty of lands. And then I can still Broken Bonds, put a land in play. Or I can uh, Beanstalk first, I guess we'll Broken Bonds. And I might actually want to use Field of Ruin first. Blow up Hive, I think. Not that it matters too much. And then I can still Fertile Footsteps, just to be mana efficient. Although Fertile Footsteps, I think, puts the land in play untapped, so going Footsteps into Field of Ruin also could have worked. If our opponent doesn't have a sweeper, they're going to be in trouble. No attacks. Augur of Autumn finds another land, so... Doing overtime on the opponent's side of the battlefield. We do have 31 tokens, so more than enough for lethal. If they can stick around. Professor Onyx can make us sacrifice our largest creature. Not quite what they needed here. So yeah, that should be game. Could make a whole bunch more tokens before attacking, but let's not waste more time. And then our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the two heavens as one creature aggro deck. My hand's not that exciting, no actual ramp cards, so I'll try free mulligan. This is better. Cobra plus Explorer can generate quite a bit of mana. Now, do I want to play Cobra on two? Or do we try and play around removal? I guess Scout is a much better play now. Don't expect too much removal out of... Uh, their creature deck. So we'll play Cobra. Play land. So I can explore. And then I could put another land in play with the scouts. Not quite enough mana to fully combo off. But I do need land 5 and play for Tatiova, so might as well. Good transformation on my own creature just to make it a 3 3. That's actually somewhat reasonable because Cobra doesn't seem needed to make extra mana at this point. But drawing into an extra land to go with Tatiova might be key. And then now we've got a blocker for Robber. 
Boros Elite. And Honored Crop Captain setting up for a big attack. Alright, so we can play Tatiova and now with two lands. It's looking pretty good. And then Ren and Seven can dig for more lands. No attack. So we'll start with probably a Snarl. Although Snarl could come into play untapped if I draw into a basic. So maybe we'll just play the recovery. There we go. And then can play a run and seven as well, but let's do this first. Could also use a zero ability, put my two lands in play, draw two. Or we can just make a large creature to play defense, and then I can use Soaring City at instant speed as we control a legendary creature here. And it also gets around Paladin class because it's not a spell, but rather a channel ability on the land. Opponent's gonna level up. So, let's see. I can wait for them to attack and then maybe bounce the creature they give double strike to. They might not even attack here. Alright, opponent sends the team. And then, so Paladin class targets Robber of the Rich. I'll use Soaring City now, so Robber of the Rich doesn't actually reveal an extra card. And we can bounce maybe even the Paladin class itself. Something I hadn't really considered. And then I can eat some creatures here. Could take 12 or could jump with the 3-3. Three, three. Or I can trade for Boros Elite. All fine options. Alright, let's keep going. And then... Can put a land in play with a scout. Ren and 7 can plus or zero. Witness could get back Cobra, maybe I should have started there. Yeah, if I play Cobra, then I'm more into using the zero ability. And then we can make more mana, draw more cards, activate Scout, put a land in play. Can get my Faceless Haven. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Toski, Bearer of Secrets. This hand seems a little slow with no early acceleration. So we'll take a free mulligan. This is fine. Got Azusa, which can do a lot of work. And then happy to keep more lands on top. The more lands, the better. Especially when facing a deck like Toski, which I don't expect to have a ton of removal. They might have a couple fight effects. Ooh, Oracle of Moldaya is exciting too. So yeah, lands of the top means we can maybe combo off with Tatiova and Azusa. If not, might go for an Oracle of Moldaya. Time warp. Not that exciting at the moment. So we'll go with Oracle. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yes. And then happy to keep the land on top. 
This attack probably was not necessary, although if they had a flash creature, we probably would have seen it last turn, like maybe a Wildborn Preserver. Inscription targeting themselves, not gaining any life. So they might be throwing in the towel here after that disgusting turn. And there's the concession. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Ariel, Knight of Windgrace. And we've got a nice opener. Grow Spiral into Migration Path. Gets a lot of mana in play. So presumably a Knight Aggro deck. Ooh, Asper Sentinel. Yeah, that's annoying. So now I might throw off my own curve and wait on Gross Spiral into Migration Path until we can pay for Sentinel so we don't let them draw a card. So we'll take one. Yeah, I think uh, Gross Spiral pay the one. Can put a Lotus Field in play if we want. Take three. And an ambitious farmhand is fine. So we can Migration Path and pay the one. And then next turn it's time for Tatiova, most likely. Could also go for a Cultivator Colossus, maybe if we draw an extra land and we're feeling adventurous. Although Colossus would be even better if we also have a Tatiova in play, of course. Yeah, a lot of options. Could also bounce everything back with River's Rebuke. Let's see, Ariel can destroy a creature with power X or less. They currently only have the one author knight. So that's probably not a concern. Yeah, we'll go Tatiova for a turn. If it gets answered, so be it. And then next turn Colossus should be fun. It's gonna be a Knight of Grace. If they have another two mana knight, they could activate Ariel and kill Tatiova. But it doesn't seem to be the case. We'll take the damage here. Does Farmhand transform into a knight? It does. So I guess they can transform Farmhand and then activate Ariel, but they'll be needing one extra mana for that. So that doesn't actually work. So I don't think Sentinel's attacking. Well, it is. So maybe they have a pump spell instead. I'll take it. Peculiar attack for sure. And a history of Banali out of play. Alrighty, so yeah, hopefully we just draw lands. And then Colossus is gonna be great. Could also Rivers Rebuke here. Might as well play my land first. And then go for Colossus. And then I still have enough mana for transformation potentially. Maybe should have cast Transformation first to be more likely to have a lands in hand. Although Broken Bones could be fun too. So decisions, decisions. Transformation on Ariel could be fine. So they don't get to destroy Tatiova. Alright, then I have to discard to hand size even. And what do we get rid of? Maybe get rid of my deserts. I 
and then I'll probably have to reverse rebuke next turn. Immortal Sun pumps the team. So they can make a pretty large attack, but of course we have a Colossus on defense, so it's just a Death Touch creature attacking. They can make another Knight indestructible. But uh, yeah, no Death Touch, so can block here. Okay, where do we begin? Probably by playing a land. Could play an Augur of Autumn first, maybe play a land off the top of the deck. It's also reasonable. Alright, we'll draw. Uro, I can play thanks to Coven, that's pretty funny. So I can play a Dryad to let me play an extra land. And then I can still Rivers Rebuke. Does this put the land into play tapped or untapped? Untapped, so I can also take out Immortal Sun, although making them replay it after bouncing it with Rivers Rebuke is probably better. So I'll do this. And then Rebuke. Opponent gets to draw a card off Asper Sentinel, but that's okay. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, Rivers Rebuke will do that to you. So yeah, we got to combo off with Tatiova a few times, and it's incredibly satisfying if you can combine Tatiova with one of those creatures that lets you play an extra land each turn, especially if you get multiples of those in play. So a lot of fun if it uh, works out that way. Sometimes you do end up facing decks with a lot of counter spells and removal, and you don't manage to keep Tatiova in play for long, but that's where those effects to play an extra land right away come in handy. So like we saw against the Nicol Bolas deck, we at the very least get to play Tatiova and draw one or two cards at the same time, so it doesn't feel too bad if Tatiova gets removed right away. Of course, against counter spells, we don't get to make those plays. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.